When we talk about Cairo, there are many places here in Cairo that are really very, very beautiful and considered as open-air museums because simply all around we have places that we can tell more about when it comes to the history and to the era to which they belong to. For example, if we're talking about a palace, about an ancient house, many, many things. And usually we say we are not limiting this to ancient sites, but we're talking about modern Egypt as well. So this time, actually, if we're talking about different eras and places that we can compare as an open-air museum here in El Muayze Street, it is the same. Because in this street, you are moving or traveling through time. Because moving from the first gate, for example, from El Fatuh Gate, all around here, you are stopping by different eras, by different buildings. Each one belongs to a certain era and each one has its own story. Each mosque has its own design and architecture. And each one has to tell you about leaders at that time. Let's find out together more about El Moise Street and more about the famous gates and more about holiday makers who are usually coming here to enjoy this beautiful place. El Moise Street is one of the best locations, highly recommended to anyone who is interested to learn more about Egypt's history. It witnessed different periods of time, each of which left its mark on one of these buildings located on both sides of the street and each one reflects a different style of architecture. It is quite clear that Egypt is famous in particular for the diversity and multitude of its Islamic monuments, which were built to different eras. The buildings of Islamic monuments in Egypt has started since the Muslims first opened Egypt in 641 AD. From this point on, Egypt has been ruled by many Islamic dynasties, starting with the Rashidun Caliphs, the Ptolemies, the Fatimids, the Ayyubids, the Mamluks, and the Ottomans, ending with rulers from the family of Muhammad Ali. It's uh, one of the most famous open museums in Egypt. Um, it uh, dates back from the, uh, the time of the Fatimids, and the Fatimids ruled Egypt from 969 to 1171, so about 209 years. During the 209 years, they uh, built a lot of buildings and many mosques and many complexes in the street, but uh, later on, the place becomes an open museum because all the 
leaders who came after the Fatimids starting from the 13th century, 1249 to the year 1517. The Ayyubids used to have some buildings here, some schools. The Ayyubids were the first people ever to introduce the schools for teaching theology for the four sects of Islam. Before that, we don't really have this type of schools. Uh, Salah al-Din, people know that he fought uh, Shiaism in Egypt by building the Sunni schools. So we have some Sunni schools in the streets still remained, and some of that still functional at the moment. Uh, after that, the Mamluks, they have the big part of the street, uh, all the famous complexes like the Kalawons, Baru, and the Nasser Muhammad ibn Kalawon, the highlights of the street built by uh, the time of the Mamluks, starting from the 14th century and onwards. Then the Ottomans used to have a lot of buildings until the time of Muhammad Ali. So we are talking about five eras, starting from the Fatimids, ends by the time of Muhammad Ali. And the street itself is the longest. It's nearly 1,900 uh, meters long from the gate of al Futuh or the conquest gate, to the gate of Zuela or the tax collector. This is how we just call him in English. Well, talking about the gates in particular, because at that time, we know we have many gates here. Each gate used to serve for something, and it was, of course, known at that time that people who are not from the area, they were not allowed to stay for long after, uh, till evening, for example, or something of a sort. The gates will be closed. It is only for traders or something like this. There is a, a section in the city where it used to be for the inhabitants of the city, and the city itself, when it was built, wasn't really for the public. It was for the Moroccan soldiers who came with the Fatimids. But later on, it becomes one of the most famous settlements in Egypt. But during the time of the Fatimids, they used to charge the people who have any uh, trade activity in the city just to selling their goods or their stuff and they're getting back. They need to, the government need to guarantee that they're paying the tax. So they appointed a man who stood by the gate just to collect the tax from the people who used to have this work. And it's known in Arabic as a mutawalli, who is the one who, uh, are res who was responsible to collect the tax from the people and from the Arabic word, the tax collector. And it was given another name called uh, Zuela. And Zuela was uh, a leader in the Fatimid army. His uh, tribe used to live nearby. So after he, after he passed away, the gate was named uh, after him. So it's known as the Gate of Zuela. The Gate of Zuela is so famous and the most unique gate because we have two minarets was built on the two towers. And this is the only uh, mosque or what's built behind the gate which have its minarets over the gate. So that was quite strange about. Each of these periods had its own requirements and characteristics which were clearly reflected on the shape, size and style of the architecture. Moreover, each ruler tried his best to build structures that expressed the features of the period he went through. One of the oldest Islamic monuments in Egypt and its builder, al hakim who is also one of the most famous caliphs that ever ruled Egypt, is the Mosque of al Hakim, located at the end of al Muayz Street, very close to Bab al Futuh, one of Egypt's ancient gates. It is very clear to the famous Khan al Khalili market. Therefore, it is always a good idea to explore the monuments in Al Muayz Street after visiting the most famous tourist market in the world. Putting in consideration 
that Cairo one day only consisted of this narrow street and the areas around it. The street contains a huge variety of Islamic monuments. The old city used to have ten gates, now we just have three. As we just mentioned, Zuela Gate is the most famous from the other side to the northern part of the enclosure. While on the other side we have the two gates of Al Futuh, which is, uh, uh, defines a conquest gate. And it was said that the army, the Fatimid army, used this gate in its military missions. So that's why it gained its name as a conquest gate. While the one that took it 200 meters from the other side of the wall, known as a Nasr gate, which is known as the gate of victory. And it's also used to receive the army after the missions on the way back. This is, for example, two of the old gates. The gate was renovated by uh, the time of the Fatimids themselves. So the gate is originally dates back from the year 969 as it's built of mud bricks, while there is a, a time of Al-Mustansir, who was the most famous um, Fatimid leader or caliph during the time of the Fatimids, and his reign was about 58 or 60 years uh, long, so it's a long, long time. And during that time, there was a famine happening in Egypt known as Ashid al Mustansiriyah, that's in Arabic, or the famine of al Mustansir. And after a while, he introduced a man that was known as Badr al Jamali. He was uh, one of the viziers. And he improved the economy. He just built, uh, rebuilt the gates. And he pulled down the old wall, which built of mud bricks. And he built a new one made of stone, which is now located in uh, position and uh, the two gates as well were renovated by him. So he just pulled down the old gates and he repelled new gates with a new style and he introduced uh, new machinery for building the gates. So the gates also dates back from the time of the Fatimids. The Mosque of Al Hakim is the second largest Fatimid Mosque in Egypt, and its design is similar to that of the Mosque of Ahmad ibn Tulun. The mosque was mainly built out of brick, other than the two unique minarets that were built out of stone. The mosque consists of an open courtyard, the Sahr, with four halls, which are Riwak, surrounding it from the four directions. And the largest and the most beautiful among them is the Qibla Ruwak, which identifies the direction to Mecca, where Muslims should be facing while praying. The Mosque of Al-Hakim is famous for three main architectural characteristics. The first is the memorial entrance with its huge size and fabulous decorations. This entrance was the first of its kind to be built in Egypt. The second beautiful architectural aspect of this mosque is its wide white marble floor that reflects the mosque itself from inside. A lot of flakes of birds are usually seen flying around the mosque and standing on its amazing floor as they drink water from its fountain. The third and most unparalleled feature of Al-Hakim Mosque 
is its uniquely designed two minarets, which are located at the north and south corners of its western entrance. They are the oldest surviving minarets in Egypt. Furthermore, there isn't any minaret in Egypt that would look like those of Al Hakim Mosque because of the rare design that was imported to Egypt from North Africa, the origin of the Fatimids. Unfortunately, the streets suffer from um, soil water for a long time. That makes some of the buildings, walls, uh, the walls becomes very fragile. So that was um, a promising project by the government just to restore and just to dehydrate the ground and to repel some of the old collapsed parts. And um, that gave a great chance for the restoration of these medieval buildings. Uh, moreover, the government decided to uh, open a visitor center here and we just can see a lot of restaurants, a lot of cafes, that is to keep a certain traffic of the locals and the tourists to the street. Because unfortunately, um, the street wasn't really enjoyed a lot of logistics. So it was quite hard for the old people, for example, to walk and to see the buildings around without stopping somewhere just to eat or drink something. So it was uh, like um, a plan by the government just to improve and to make uh, the street uh, enjoying like uh, um, with the tourist services uh, nearby and around. Well, I talked to many people, I mean holiday makers from different nationalities, and um, there is something in common that we usually talk about, that yes, of course, they are eager to learn more about Egypt. They love to visit historical sites, uh, tourism sites, but the point is the majority, they are looking for being among people because if they want to know more about the country, they need to mingle with the culture of the country, to be in such streets, uh, to, to talk to people, uh, to, to sit and eat, and uh, just to witness or to have the experience of the lifestyle. How do you see this? Uh, the, when we just uh, like uh, got tourists from different places and we just uh, start to talk about the history of the place and we mentioned that the street is nearly more than a thousand years old, this is quite stunning for them because a thousand years old a building around is very, very old for them. Especially that when we just compare this with the other monuments of Egypt, it looks like quite modern. So when we just mentioned that this building dates back from the 13th century or the 12th century, this was quite uh, uh, stunning for the people just to know the age and it's, it's, it's quite interesting for them to see something stands more than eight or hundred, uh, nine hundred years ago. And the uh, other uh, part of the story is people have the chance to go inside the building so they can experience uh, how the people during these days used to live and what was their lifestyle. And when we just see a lot of um, let's say shops around, uh, people can do also some, um, some shopping around to buy some um, um, typical Egyptian souvenirs like this little pyramids or the papyri or the perfumes or whatever. So they can s just see a lot of shops around the place just to enjoy this experience as well. So the place is not just to see monuments. It also have other things to do like eating, dining, I mean somewhere, or enjoying a cafe. We have the oldest cafe in this place, which is 150 years old. We have one of the oldest restaurants. Uh, people just compare the age of these restaurants and the places with the age of uh, some countries in the region. So we have some restaurants, we have some cafes older than some countries in our region. The minarets were built by dropping them inside two huge square stone structures that appear clearly from outside the mosque. This was how the Fatimid used to build their minarets in Tunisia and North Africa. The mosque would also appear similar to that of Al Azhar in some factors, as they both have this curve in the walls of the prayer halls 
except that these of Al Hakim Mosque is much higher. Both mosques also share having three small domes in the Qibla prayer hall. And by the way, the mosque of Al-Hakim was not always used as a mosque or a prayer area, as it was used for many other purposes through its history because of its wide space. The mosque of Al-Hakim was used also as a prison for the crusaders and a host table in the reign of Saladin and a storage area for food and weapons in the period of the French occupation of Egypt. At the end of the French occupation, the French soldiers left the mosque in a very poor state. The mosque was not renovated until the period of Caliph Tawfiq, when he decided to transform the mosque into an Islamic art museum before the museum was established in Port Said Street. The mosque of Al Hakim was even used as a school in the times of the former Egyptian president Gamal Abdel Nasser. And today, the mosque receives numerous visitors from around the world to view the fascinating ancient Islamic architecture. The mosque is also still used for prayer up till now. But artistic beauty of Islamic monuments is not limited to mosques only. It also includes houses and palaces side by side with fortresses and architectural constructions. Il Sahimi House is one of the prominent houses in Cairo that dates back to the 18th century and is regarded as a perfect example for the style of decoration and designing at that time. When we talk to the holiday makers coming to enjoy their vacation in Egypt, we have something in common among all of them. The most interesting part for them is not only visiting the museums or the temples and monuments, but also to mingle here in the culture of Egypt, to learn more about the history and more about the lifestyle. That's why when they visit such places, they are very much interested. Like, for example, visiting Khan al-Khalili, al Muayza Street, all of these areas because again they are traveling through time they are moving on from one building to the other from one side to the other each one belongs to a certain era and each one has its own story that was all for now thank you all for joining us next time we'll be back and more about Egypt <laughs>